I told y'all we're going to understand the beast religion. What, what is happening? What is, it's like everything is coming together. Everybody's saying the same thing. All religions will start to say the same thing because that is the end time prophecy that there will be a one world religion to go along with a one world government to be ruled by one world ruler. Everything is becoming to one. So all the churches, all the religions have to come under one banner. That's why we're hearing words like Chrislam. Hearing words like ecumenism. We're hearing things like unity. And, and let's all just come together. Let's put aside what we don't agree about and let's try to work together. We're laying aside certain uh, uh, principles of the faith in order that we could be together. Because we're saying coming together is the most important thing. Instead of being scripturally accurate. Biblically sound. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we're gathering together with whoever. If we got the same goal, if 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 if, if, if our goal is to fight racism, then we come together to fight racism, and it doesn't matter what you believe, or what I believe, as long as we both against racism. Say amen. See, these are the things that's causing us to to to. And this is how you. This is really what happened with the homosexual movement. They tied their movement to civil rights, and they came marching with us for our causes at first, until they got their rights, and now they don't show up for black causes because they don't use us to get to where they're going. Y'all want to hear what I'm saying? And they got, and the homosexuals copied it from the women. The women used the black civil rights the same way and became a minority. And, did, and then when they got their rights, they left the black movement. The same way the homosexuals did, they was with the black movement, then they left the black movement after they got their rights. They used us to get where they're going. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Civil rights has become a vehicle. As a matter of fact, that's the most stupidest thing I've ever seen is that Mexicans don't march for civil rights and, and, and Italians don't march for civil rights and neither do uh, uh, Chinese or anybody else. Why are we the only ones marching for civil rights? Wow. Say, man, we are, they, they marching for Mexican rights and Latino rights and Chinese rights and Korean rights. Why are we only ones want to be civil? Everybody else is marching for their own causes. And we almost feel like we have betrayed somebody if we actually say black rights. Let's let it be us first. Y'all y'all there. So we have to understand that we have been bamboozled, hoodwinked, so to speak. Amen. Into these movements that have that have always used the church, the black church, but never trusted or believed in the message of the gospel, but used the used the, the houses of worship in order to push their agendas, but could care less about the message. Or the man that we say we worship. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we have been betrayed. We have been, we have been sold out by this beast system that is in most religions now. It's in most churches. Are y'all there? Let me show you, then I'll, I'll give you a little bit of understanding. Go to 28, Daniel 11 and 28. You there? Now this is speaking about the Antichrist. Daniel is, is, is prophesying about the Antichrist. Amen. And he's getting ready to reveal some things about the Antichrist that we need to know. And once he reveals these things, you'll, you'll, it'll get clear what time we're living in. I'm just going to start in 28. I could read the whole thing, but we'll start in 20, verse 28. Then shall he return into his land with great riches and his heart. It's talking about the Antichrist. Shall do against shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. At that time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but, but it shall not be as the former or the latter for the ships of Shittim shall come against him therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant so shall he do he shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant and arm and arm shall stand in, on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily sacrifice and they shall place the abomination that make desolate and they and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries Talking about this world politician leader, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. That meant that this is this this antichrist is on the scene. Come on now, look at the Bible. That, that, no, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all something, so y'all need to hear what I'm going to say. The antichrist is on the scene, right? God's people are on the scene. The antichrist is heard. God's people are heard. The antichrist is working on the scene. And God's people are here too. Amen. Right? Amen. What a rapture. Wow. You were told you would never see that. Y'all don't want to talk about this. 
See, we were told we would be gone before this thing happened, but he's on the scene. He's working, doing world ruler stuff. And God's people are still here. Being strong. Not hiding, but being strong. Doing exploits mean great works. In the midst of this world ruler. In the midst of this beast system. Are y'all there? I told y'all the rapture came from the Catholic Church. I told y'all the Catholic Church is the beast system. And they put the rapture out to confuse charismatics and Protestants. They didn't want you to know that we were, that all the early church fathers was pointing to Rome, the beast system the whole time. When they put out that rapture, it confused us and they said, and, the, and they used a future prophecy of the man of sin. Instead of saying the system is already there. Your grandmama and them in it. Y'all all been at the altar with the incense, burning incense to the queen of heaven that they say is Mary, which is really Nimrod's wife, Samarimus. You've been worshiping false gods the whole time. And some of your southern people mixed it with voodoo. That's why Catholicism goes with voodoo. It can go with anything. It's universal. That's what it means. It means it can adapt to anything. It can incorporate anybody because it is the beast religion. Everybody can come under the umbrella. And that's what the Pope is doing, bringing everybody un back under the Catholic Church. Amen. Say amen. amen. So I told y'all that that rapture was the lives of the enemy to confuse Christians about the end time. And, and, then, and also for them not to be prepared. Because if you don't think you're going to go through nothing, you're not going to prepare for it. That's why y'all don't live right. Because you think you're going to fly away before the bad stuff happens. You had, but if you understood, I'm going to show you that that's not true. I'm going to show you right here that it's not true. You're going to have to go through something. Amen. Why? Because you ain't clean enough. You ain't spotless enough. And that spotless life does not, that spotless bride is not magic. She got to clean herself up. I'll show you. Oh, y'all don't want to see. No, you don't want to see. Let's escape. No. No. Everybody ain't escaping. Some of us going to prove our loyalty to our king. Oh. <laughs> they don't want to hear that. That's why churches won't. That's why, they, why you think priests ain't preaching it. They don't touch these books. They don't talk about this end time. Why? Because they don't want to tell you the truth. That you're going to have to see some things for us all over. That don't preach where offerings are low on type, type stuff like that. No, I want to hear that. People ain't coming back to hear they're going to have to go through nothing. They only want God to further their career and to bless them and to, and, and, and to, comp, and to compliment them in their sin. They want a God that agrees with wickedness. They don't want a holy God, a terrible God. When, when God gets done with these homosexuals, they're going to wish that the devil did it. God is more terrible than the devil could ever be. So that's why I, I was upset when it first happened. I said, okay, well, all they're doing is hastening my Lord. All they're doing is making him come faster. That's it. I said it. I'm going to put it out there. Look at this. Now listen to this. And, and, they, and they that understand. Now I want to show y'all this because so y'all understand. Verse 33. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet, now they that understand, those that have understanding, those that understand this word, those that know God, talk to me. Those that understand and instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword. These are God's people in the last day that have understanding. Yet they, why don't preachers preach this? Because it doesn't preach well for you to know to really be a Christian. You're going to have to be willing to do what the first church was willing to do. Love not your life unto death. That's why Paul said you have not resisted unto blood yet. You ain't lost no blood over this gospel. That's why everybody want to be a Christian. It's cliche. It's a fetish. It's a fad. But wait till the pressure come. You're going to find out how many going to switch over. You're going to find out how many going to say, put the mark right here. When they find out the suffering that these preachers have not prepared them for. Uh, Y'all want to hear this. Ain't prepared them to go through nothing. They don't think they're going to go through nothing. 
What's happening with them Christians over in the Middle East? They didn't know ISIS was going to grab them. ISIS is cutting their heads off, and I'm pretty sure they didn't know that that was going to happen. Very hard to prepare, but when you don't know it's going to come. They're not telling them convert or die. They said stay a Christian. We're going to still kill you. The Bible says you shall be hated by all men. Say all men. Everybody. Every religion will come together and hate you. That's why the Bible said, but he that endure to the end shall be saved. What do you mean endure to the end? Endure to the end of what? Endure to the end of what's coming. What will we be enduring to the end if we're going to be gone before the end come? You got to go through. Uh, I don't preach well. It don't preach. It don't, it don't preach well. See, that's going to be a world here. You're going to have to decide you want to be a part of this world or this world. Are y'all there? And this time is the time of the weed now process. Sheep and goats. Weeds and wheat. Those that are real. Those that are not. Those that follow the lamb wherever he lead. Those that like lambs to the slaughter, they'll still go. Then there are those that just goats. They just benefiting from being around lambs. They're gonna, you're going to find the goats in this hour because when the, what, what, what separates the two is persecution. You'll find out who's, who's just going to church because they went to church all their life and they mount grandmama go to church and they just, you know, they just like, they just like going to church. Like the you're going to find them as the goats. It's going to be like, look, I can't go through, uh, I can't go through nothing. I didn't know he was going to go through this. So, and then there's preachers already preparing how to make this uh, gay marriage legal, uh, uh, normal in the church. They already prepare messages so that to water down the word so everybody can accept it. Because they don't want their 501c3 tax base to be messed with for the lack of paying taxes. 6% on the dollar, they're going to kill the word of God to keep six extra cent. I'd rather pay the, cent, the six cent and say what I'm going to say. Look at this. Now let me show you, because I, I want to show y'all this, because I, I want to mess with your end time theology. Amen. This escape is a mentality that's not in the Bible. It doesn't mean God's not going to protect and keep his people, because some will, but some won't be. Some of his people will. I'm going to show you. I'll just read it. Look at this. Verse 33. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword. And by flame, ISIS burning cats over, and by captivity, and by spoil, many days. These are God's people, Antichrist is on the scene. God's people still here. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. Look at verse 35. And some of them of understanding shall fall. Understanding is you. You who understand this gospel to... Some of them will understand it shall fall for why, why, why? To try them. Look at the body. To try them and to purge them and to make them white. Even to the time of the end. God's going to allow some of us to fall because our garments are not clean. Oh, God love everybody. Y'all don't know God. You only with God because it ain't costing you nothing to be with God. But when God starts dealing with your dirty garment of sin, your dirty garment of those hidden things that's got stains on your garment, them secret sins that you won't deal with, if you don't deal with them now, you going to need to fall later. Y'all want to talk? No, y'all want to talk. God, I'm just going on to heaven. Some are going to fall. I don't understand how we read these scriptures, weeds and weeds, sheep and goats, and don't understand that God, is, there is a sifting process at the, end of, at the end of the world. There's a sifting coming. Why? Because what is the reason for the sheep and the goats? To prove. To prove what? Who's he is. Who's really his and who's not? So nobody, just, I'm going to show you. Remember the, the parable when Jesus said, I'm having a, uh, the, a man is part of the wedding feast for his son. And he went out and told the guests that he had invited to come. And they gave him excuses, man, I got to go do this with my wife. And my, I got to go deal with my ox or my, 
my animal, or they, so they didn't show up. Amen. So he told his servants, go out there and find anybody. Go to the highways and to the hedges and compel men to come. Tell them the wedding feast is ready. The Bible says that the, the people that the, the people that he, the second people he invited, they all showed up. Amen. But then he, the master looked in the crowd and he saw a man who was, who, who was there who had been invited the first time, but he didn't come. He said, grab that man. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. I invited him the first time, but he didn't show up. So therefore, he is not, he, 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 he was not, he, he, he did not prepare himself. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So the last days are all about preparation. It's all about spotless garments. I know we don't believe it because we've got a, such a, a watered down gospel that you can live however you want to live. And you're gonna go on. You're going, you're going on in the gates, and the rapture's gonna happen, and you're gonna fly out of here, fly away like Grandma and them told you that's gonna happen. And you're gonna find that it's not like that. That's why we're still here. You're looking at the Antichrist and don't know it. he's alive. The man's on the earth. He's living now. The Satanists know he's here. You about ready to see him? These Illuminati, Luciferian people know he's here. They're preparing the world for him. Everything you see, y'all don't even know what's happening in America. America ain't falling financially because we're a weak country. These Illuminati people are busting the country on purpose. They bankrupting it because they know out of chaos, this man comes to reign. Out of chaos, he comes to reign. That's why World War III's got to happen. All of this is part of their plan. Because what they're doing is they're causing all the problems of the world and they're going to bring this man to sin to solve them. Amen. That's the reason why you're going to follow after the beast. The Bible says when he shows up, he's going to do these lying wonders. And people are going to just be marvel, like, who can war with him? Oh, my goodness. And the Bible says because of that, people are going to bow down and worship him. But the reason why they're going to do it because the earth is going to be in so much chaos by these, uh, uh, by these 13 uh, Illuminati families that are over corporations that are destroying everything so that you will give your allegiance to the beast. They bankrupting us on purpose. It's all on purpose because what good would be a mark of the beast if I could go over here and buy something without your system? So they're going to take away the money so there's no way for you to buy nothing but to be bad in their system. So when they take cash out, you're going to have a mark. The only thing you're going to be able to buy is if you're going to be able to to buy some ain't gonna be no money ain't gonna be no cash it's gonna have to be scanning your hand or your face in order to get something well if you don't sign up for that system then you can't eat so the goal is to bust the system keep you from growing your own food like they doing now keep you from uh, just, uh, contaminate water sources and all of that so you have to go to their system they're gonna force you to take it are y'all there so this is the beast System. I'm going to talk about the beast religion, but I'm, I'm going to get into the religion now. But I want you all to understand, don't get your head out of the clouds. Amen. It's skating into heaven stuff. The reason why a lot of us think that way is because of the funerals we've been to. The lying in the funerals. That's where it come from. Because some of our first understanding of church was at a funeral. We ain't never been to church. Here. Somebody died, we went to church, and they told us no matter how this person was living, they, they owned in the pearly gates. Pull one out for me, partner. Save a hit that weed for me in heaven. That's the mentality they have. Oh, he's at the crossroads, crossing over. Didn't know the crossroads is actually a demonic place where you sell your soul to the devil. That's what the crossroads is. But yes, y'all think that's somewhere to go, that's some good place to cross over and to know. That's where you sell your soul at. Down, it's down in Jackson, Mississippi, where Robert Johnson, the, the, the father of the blues and rock and rolls, got his... A demonic ability to play the music that now has evolved into what we got now this witchcraft music that we got now and that's why every other artist must do the same thing y'all there are not there see what you think is even culture you, you, you really are living in the matrix you think this is real what you're looking at it's all the matrix for real real reality is too hard to deal with that's why when you see a glimpse of it you go back into the fantasy you want to go into the fantasy that's why you come to church like this and hear the word. As soon as you walk out, you try to forget. You turn on B96 as loud as you can and hope Beyonce twerk you out of the word of God that you just received because it's heavy. It's too heavy to hear this all the time. It's too heavy to realize, to look and see the truth. So you really say, blind me. Give me the pills. Give me the weed. Blind me. Give me the club. Give me the concert. Blind me. Give me the sex. Blind me. Because to live with a realization that what you thinking is going to last, it's going to end, and it's going to end soon. It's very scary to a person who ain't ready to give their whole life to God. 
So blind me. And that's why, that's why y'all want blind preachers. Because when the blind lead the blind, nobody feels condemned. <laughs> nobody feels convicted if we all blind. Blind man can't preach you out of nothing. He can't see himself. That's why you, this, this word right here, most people hear this word every now and then. They can't take too long much of it every now and then because the word is too heavy. Because it confronts where you are. Amen. Say amen. amen. Are y'all there? Amen. If you make it to heaven by the grace of God, I'll be somebody you'll look up. You'll love me. You'll love the brother that told you, tried to tell you. Say amen. amen. Let me get done. Let me get now. now what did I tell you? I said now, in verse 35, I was trying to prove to y'all that everybody ain't going to be no raptured out of here. Amen. But some are going to fall. Amen. But the reason... To show you how, how awesome that God is to make the devil think he's really doing something. But he's using Satan to prove his people. Amen. Satan ain't doing nothing to God. That's why I said, you think God, God was upset about gay marriage? God wasn't upset about that. He said, go on, do it. Enjoy it. Do it. After I had to think about it, because I was upset too until I thought about it. I was going to shut my Facebook down. I was so mad. I was so upset over that. But then all of a sudden, as I got to think about it, and yesterday we were riding up to Chicago, I got to praying and thinking about it, and then I said, well, 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 my response should be like God's response. God ain't worried about it, and I ain't worried about it. I'm telling you, enjoy getting married. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Do all that you're big enough to do. Don't leave nothing out. No need in being down low, because far is far, whether you do it all the way or a little bit, so enjoy it. All you're doing is making fire for yourself. You're just making a hotter fire. So what am I upset about? It ain't like, what you going to do, kill me? Well, I'm going to be with God. Can you say that? So what difference do it make if y'all all do? Oh, you can have all of the, the, the gay sex, marriage, gay sex. You can do, do what you want to do. Don't touch me with it, but do what you want to do. Because if you touch me with it, you're going to have to kill me. But that's all right. I got a heavenly home. All we're seeing is, is the setting of the stage for our God to come. That showed me one thing. The book is real. It's telling us the truth. Oh, I wasn't there yet. I ain't showed you. I haven't got there. Let's keep reading. Can we read? Verse 36. And the king shall, the king shall do according to his will. It's talking about the Antichrist. And he shall exalt himself, magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall, you know, the most high. He's going to talk against the most high. Right, right, right. Our God, our creator God. Oh, yeah. and, shall, and, and shall prosper until the indignation be accomplished for that for that that is determined shall be done. Verse 37. Neither shall he regard the God of his father, nor the desire of women. I told y'all, I said this 20 years ago, the, the, the end time spirit is going to be homosexual. The Antichrist is going to be a homosexual. I told y'all that. You're, this, I, I told you, the book of Daniel told us that nobody, I don't know why people don't want to believe that, but I told y'all this is not about decorating the two guys want to be together. This is a, a demonic agenda because homosexuality is worship. It's worship to a deity, to a demon god called Molech, Baal, Shemos, Artemis. That's who they worshiping with homosexuality. I told y'all that, but no, they just want to get married and get up. I don't care if they want to get married. I, that don't even bother me. I don't care if they live next door to me. That don't bother me. What bothers me is you try to make me accept it. Listen, listen. Not make me accept it in the way y'all thinking. I'm saying you trying to make me say this is right. As y'all indict my God. That God made us this way. God's flooded. I said it. Get your feelings hurt. Well, they're going to commit suicide. That's on them. You chose that. If the truth make you kill yourself, that's on you. You heard what I said. Now, I ain't getting into all that old feeling, feeling stuff. Don't do it, but if you do it, that's on you. You're going to stand before a demon. You're going to stand before us. As soon as you kill yourself, you're going to hear, ha, 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 ha. I fooled you. Welcome. That's what you're going to hear. And you're going to realize that, oh, that, old, that, old, that old preacher was real. He was telling the truth, wasn't he? I was telling y'all that this is going to be the end time thing. And I, I said it yesterday. I said, now, what's going to happen for all of y'all? And I know y'all going to get tired. I don't really care. I really don't care. Because you Negroes out of, out of great, got the greatest mind block I've ever seen. People can tell y'all they even. Y'all don't care. I've never seen people like this. You can tell black people, you know that's the devil. That's the devil. 
That, that, that ain't no devil. He ain't no devil. I don't understand. Say, I know Satan has to laugh like I'm telling these cats that I'm showing them that I am the devil. This, this is of me. But they don't want to believe. They want to believe in me. There was a, a, a column just came out in the newspaper that said there's some, uh, they, they read the, 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 there's an there's a old lady that is the mother of one of the men, gay lovers of Barack Obama. I didn't say it. The guy that was over the choir in the church he used to go to. And they said it's about ready to come out that we really had a first homosexual president the whole time. I didn't say it. They said it. It's three men that were killed before, but while, when, right when he was getting ready to become president, they killed three gay men to silence them. I said it. I said it. And they about ready to come out that they ready to come out that he was gay the whole time. Why do y'all think a straight man's gonna be that crazy to do to, to push this? Come on, go on, come on, come on, black people. Get mad now. Get 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 mad. He ain't your savior. Silly. Try to tell. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell black folk. The white guy called Larry Summers came out and said it. Larry Sinclair, I think. Uh, he came out and said it. He told it. Nobody wanted to hear him say it. He said what happened with him. He said he was. They didn't kill him. They killed the three black boys. And the, and, the, and the boy's mama is saying right now that, that she was on the police force and she said she know they covered it up because he was ascending to the presidency and they did not want the negativity to come out that he was a homosexual so, or bisexual. So they covered it up. And up in Chicago, in the gay areas of the Chicago where he's from, all them homosexuals have already said that he is of us. That's why the only people he listened to, everybody else can scream at him. He don't hear nothing nobody say. But the minute homosexuals scream, he, he, he do something for them. Because he was covering up, he, they, they was blackmailing him to cover up who he really was. But now that he's normalized it, he wants to like Bruce Jenner. I said it. I said it. Y'all want to sit here and run, figure out how this is normal. Ain't no straight man going to normalize that. Ain't no man that love women going to do that. Any straight man knows that if we really did this, we would extinct ourselves. I said it. So that's why every, all the good accomplishments going on of people having good accomplishments and he don't say nothing to nobody, but soon as a gay dude say I'm gay in the NFL, let's stop the press. He got to give a conference for that. Let's talk about the gay ba basketball player. Any gay thing, that's all we talking about. But when it comes to any straight accomplishment, any black accomplishments, you ain't talking about nobody. Stop the whole nation just to give a, 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 a to talk about a, 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 the, the decision that just came down so he can praise that, but then went over and sung Amazing Grace to the dead black man. Y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. There's something wrong. The Bible says they say have a form of godliness but deny the power. When praise perversion and when sung amazing grace over here. And we was, we was bamboozled because oh didn't he sing amazing grace. Yeah but what would he say over here? And you Negro still ain't figured it out. You ain't got nothing out of this. We worse than we ever been. It's worse. Racism is worse. The jobs are worse. The economy's worse. Everything's worse. And you still talking about, oh, well, y'all just hating on him. I, 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 don't, I ain't hating on nobody. I don't care about it. Say what you want to say, Negro. Say what you want to say. Stay on the ship. Say what you want to say. I'm tired of trying to rescue Negroes. Won't stay on, stay on the Titanic. Listen to the music. Listen to the music. Keep on trying to save cats. Won't drown. Don't drown. Go in, end yourself. End yourself. Maybe we just end yourself. You want to drown. I'm trying to tell you. I don't, I don't believe that because, you know, his children are pretty. Y'all so stupid. His daughter's got good hair. Y'all are ignorant. Just ignorant. We are some of the most ignorant people. He got a wife. All homosexuals in politics got wives. Are y'all silly as y'all can be? Most of them guys are gay. Are gay. That's part of, being in, part of being in the secret society of hard, but you got to be that way. Y'all don't know nothing about these secret societies where these men have to be gay. 
These Freemasons got to take their clothes off in front of one another and do gay acts. That's part of the reason they make them do it so they can blackmail them so they never open their mouth about the secrets. Being gay is a part of that secret society. Y'all think it's just something, all your politicians are that way. I ain't just talking about him, but I'm so shocked that we can't even put two and two together. Because if I, as a preacher, I said me as a preacher, was out here doing everything in my power to push gay rights, you would say, you would suspect me. Would you not suspect me? Say, hey, wait, 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 that preacher, he's too, he's pushing this too much. Why is he that serious about this? I said it. I don't care, say what you want to say. I ain't got no president. You never had no president. All you ever had was a pastor. You never had a president. If you don't believe it, why ain't we got one nothing so far out of this? I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. I'm getting on into it. I told y'all, you know, we don't worry. That's why I said people can only take this word in little doses. It's, and they got to get mad for six months over what I said. Then God got to show it to them later on. You'll see it one day. I ain't waking up people to sleep. Jesus said, sleep on, sleepers. Those that sleep, stay sleep. I ain't waking up nobody won't be asleep. That's why the word of God is in parables. The Bible says, Jesus said, I'm talking in parables for those who don't, that I don't even want them to wake up. I ain't going to say it right out. So there will be those that hear the same word and they get something out of it. And there will be those that heard nothing at all because they sleep. And in the last days, those that sleep don't have to just remain sleep because that's where they want to be. Lord, help me. Look at this here. It says now, 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 now this, this Antichrist, uh, what was I at? Verse, what was I at? Verse 38. Uh, but, 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 no, no, verse 37. Let me finish that up. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Amen. Now, I told y'all, I'm not, now, 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 I said this 20 years ago. Y'all, y'all thinking I'm, y'all thinking that some of y'all don't know me. You think I'm just saying this now, like I done jumped on the bandwagon of homosexuality. Honey, I've been saying this 20 years ago before anybody was gay or you knew they were gay. I, was, I didn't, it say no jumping on no fag stuff. Because I'm going to tell y'all right now, the whole goal of this, they're going to march against the church and they're going to shut every church down. Every church is going to get, every church is going to have to get shut down because they're going to come in there and try you and see what you preaching. They're going to come in there and, and they're going to sit up in your church and they're going to come in there and say, we want to be married. And because it's legal, they're going to have a right to do it. And if you don't marry them, they're going to sue your church and shut your church down. That's what this is all about. It was to silence the, the true church. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Because real Christians will never go for it. And that's what it was about. And y'all think it's about, I can't, I can't wait for it to happen because my, my, my hashtag is going to be pastor told you so. That's who I am now. I told y'all. What I told y'all, that's call me that, because that's who I am. Because I done told y'all for 20 years, it ain't about no love. It ain't about it's, about, it's about a perversion, normalizing a perversion to silence, to get laws passed, to silence Bible-believing churches. That's what it's about. And now when they come into your church, they coming. Matter of fact, soon as this thing passed, they went on Twitter talking about we're going to shut y'all churches down. And we coming. I, I thought it was about love. Why they, why they, why they coming out to the church for? Because that's what it was all about in the first place. Because homosexuality is the spirit of Lucifer. I said it. What do you think Baphomet is? What do you think the Freemason goat God is? The Hermaphrod, the Hermaphrodite. That's why they made so much big deal out of Bruce Jenner. Because that's exactly what Satan is. A, a, a twisted being. The Baphomet got women, uh, women upper body and a male lower body. That's why they're trying to. But I told y'all before, uh, homosexuality releases the greatest level of darkness. That's why he does that. That's why he's trying to get people to go that way. It releases the greatest level. All sin is sin, but there's some sin has stronger power than other sins. That sin releases the greater darkness. That's why he can't reveal himself until he turned the world gay. Y'all don't even know. I mean, it's people so silly. Oh, people are just so, I'm, I'm so tired of telling people, I'm, I'm pastor told you so, I told y'all, I ain't going to say nothing else. I'm just going to say, I told y'all, move on to something. Ain't no need in coming to me talking about, did you see that pastor? I told y'all that. No need in trying to come to me after it's all over. Go to Revelation 13 real quick, let me go. I told my wife, I said, no, nah, these Negroes ain't going to get me on the front line. You said, Pastor. I said, they come here talking about uh, shut the church down. I'm, I'm here. This ain't, this ain't God for me. 
You can, you can burn every Bible. I can pray. I can pray. I can pray. You don't even know I'm praying. I can be praying in my mind. You don't know. You don't know I'm praying. Because I, I mean, I, you know, see, because you know, see, 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 what what happened is you 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 got to be careful. You don't get hijacked by these white patriots. See, these white patriots they have you fighting for this country. They don't care about Christianity for real. But they 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 don't want their country to fall. So they they fight for Christianity because they say their country was built on on Christianity. But in reality, when you studied it, it was not built on Christianity at all. Because all them cats was Freemasons. And so how did how Freemasons is who saying their God is Lucifer? Albert Pike wrote the Freemason manual. Said our God is Lucifer. So the Illuminati's God is Lucifer. Who you think coming back? Who you think's gonna appear? Lucifer, the light bearer, the light bringer. And they, that's, oh, I ain't got time to go too deep into that. But that's what that all of them, Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, they was all Freemasons. So I don't know where they, they lied to you. The reason why they lied about it is because there were a lot of Christians that did come, and because they are afraid of Christians, because Christians can pray and destroy spiritually all the plans of the enemy. So they use a form of godliness. They acted like they were Christians. They talked Christian talk. They wrote even in the Constitution, in those documents, they, they wrote Christianized language, but they were not. That's why when they said all men were endowed by a creator, they never said who they talking about. Because they was leaving the back door, they knew who they were talking about. They put their, they, they put their doctrine right on the, back, on the back of the first dollar that they ever made. They showed you this is what we believe. This pyramid is the, is the Egyptian uh, fallen angel religion that they got from Egypt, and this is what they believe. And they made a deal. Those 13 families have made a covenant with Satan. They are his bloodline. No, 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 no. He didn't pick them. They are his bloodline. They trace themselves back to Cain, the seed of Cain. They are, oh, y'all want to talk about this. They are his bloodline. They are his people. And that's why the real ones in that family, you got to be in that family. You got to have sex in the family. The 13, you got to have, you got to be part of the bloodline because it's in the DNA. It's in their DNA. So these 13 families have cut a covenant with him that he will make them, of course, as rich as they can. But their job is to build the world for him. He may give them all the money and they do all the wickedness to bring him here. The goal is to bring him here, to overthrow, to have a new world order, which means overthrow the old order of the creator God. Overthrow the order of Jesus Christ and bring this new order, which is this secular order or this Luciferian age or the age of Aquarius. This is what's coming. And so all of the pagan stuff, all of this stuff that we're into, everything is pagan. It's Luciferian. You could call it New Age, but it's all Luciferian. Tattooing up our bodies is Luciferian. It's all witch, witchcraft. It's the same thing. All of us together. Witchcraft is Catholicism. Catholicism is witchcraft. Well, witchcraft is voodoo. Voodoo is hoodoo. Voodoo is Hindu. All of it's the same. Freemason has the same witchcraft rights as everything else. It's all, all these religions are the same. There's only one that stands out. And that's why Jesus said, you're going to be hated by everybody else. Going to hate you for my name. Because everybody else is already together. Some of these religions don't even know they together. They just they ain't, they ain't bridged yet. That's what the, the Pope is busy doing, bringing them all together, talking about we got this in common, come on in, and they all coming together, but against one, which is the true church, the true believers. The, the, the Catholic Church is going to do in the last days, the Antichrist is going to do what the Catholic Church always did, persecute Christians, kill Christians, parade us around, hang us on stakes. I'm going to tell y'all, I told y'all before that what you think is the cross is not a symbol. It's a, it was a Catholic symbol to their God, Samarimus. It is not a symbol of Christ. Christ was not crucified on two sticks. He was crucified on a post like this, not like this. That's a, that's a symbol to their God. I try to tell y'all that. All the most of the, what we're doing in the Christian church comes from Catholicism. Th this is why Martin Luther broke off and formed the Protestants, the protesters against the beast that they were calling the, the beast. 
But the Catholic were wise and put out false teachers and doctrines to, to lie and deceive the Protestants to cause them to still operate in Catholic doctrine and slowly bring them back under. That's why you got four gospel bishops and Pentecostal bishops going over to Rome, bowing down, uh, Bishop Paul Morton them, kissing the Pope, talking about saying with their own mouth, we all need to go back under the Roman Catholic Church. These are supposed to be four gospel, four denomination churches uh, uh, bowing down to the bishops. These bishops are bowing down, kissing the Pope. T.D. Jakes, kissing the Pope. Kenneth Copeland, them, kissing the Pope. Bowing down to the Pope. Why are they doing that? Because the Pope is saying, I'm bringing y'all back home. All y'all coming back under the Roman Catholic Church. Everybody outside of this is going to be persecuted. This is where the persecution is going to start from because all the other churches are going to come together under that and the real church is going to say, no, we can't be with y'all. They're going to persecute the real ones. This is where, this is where we're headed. The beast religion that you see it happening all the time. It's every, every, every entertainer, artist, uh, part of the beast religion. Every song you hear is part of the beast religion. Part of the beast religion is throw off all restraint. It's the same mantra as witchcraft. Do what thou wilt. Do what you want to do. That's the beast religion. Uh, but the, the, the sin, sin in the beast religion is to do right. Is to do righteous. People that are righteous are sinning in the beast religion. Amen. To love your one wife is a sin in the beast religion. Amen. To not molest your child is a sin in the beast religion. Because in, because in their religion, which is a witchcraft religion, children uh, five years old are considered grown in their religion. That's why they molest kids. And you think this is a joke. Now you're going to see pedophiles are saying, we want, we want our rights too. We ready to get married too. Because, because they, because you know why pedophiles are saying that? Because they understand what perversion is. If you accept this, you got to accept this. So here come the bestialities. Well, well, well I want to have sex with an animal. I told, I told them yesterday, there's, people, there's, there's women right now, you can look it up over in Japan, that done fell in love with a gorilla. They lust in a gorilla in Japan. Women, Japanese women. Bestiality is going to be a thing of normalcy. You say, where did that come from? Well, I told y'all there was the fallen angels in Genesis 6 introduced to man to mix and start having sex with animals. The Bible said they sinned against birds and beasts. They start having sex with animals. Y'all don't want to talk about this. You think of society, you, you, you think we fall and fall. Oh, Wait till the real. Wait till wait. Wait till you really see what the end of the soup gonna look like. Right now, we still got a good boil at the top. Wait, wait till it boil down to a low gravy, and you realize this muck that they really gonna want to do. You gonna realize, oh my God, I didn't think it was gonna get this bad. When all of a sudden the necromancer say, you know what? We want our rights, and I want to marry a dead body. Necrophilias. They there, y'all. They coming. You don't believe me. What do you think they putting these, these movies all the time for? They showing y'all in these movies that this, all this stuff is coming out. They gonna want their rights. I want to marry a dead body. I just showed y'all. I just showed y'all where, 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 where over in Germany, two brothers married each other. Bro, twin brothers married each other. I just saw where a girl married her daddy. Incest married her father. It's all come, it's all, all wait till, and that's why I just sat back. That's why I'm not upset. Oh, no, sir. I'm not upset. I just sat back and say, oh, wait till y'all see what, what world y'all going to create. Wait till we out of the way and y'all realize that this love that we've been showing ain't going to be no love. You're going to find out this is going to be hell on. That's why we're going to want to be ready to go because you're going to see what hell look like. When these ancient uh, uh, fallen angels get come through that portal over and so I ain't got time to go with that but they gonna uh, you gonna find out what sin gonna look like and then you're gonna be ready to, you're gonna we're gonna be I'm ready to go with Jesus now when you see true Sodom and Gomorrah I told Sodom and Gomorrah was not about them just trying to trying to wasn't just about homosexuality they were gang raping dudes in the street they had beds in the square where they had or open orgies where they raped men. That's why they got cursed because they, the angels was coming through and they want anybody coming to the city, they was raping them. Yeah. Oh, that's where we headed. That's where we headed. You in the bathroom, this man in your business. And see, that's where we headed. And then they're going to have special rights that if I kill him, it's a hate crime.
This is where we had it. So be prepared. I'm all right now. I said, okay, Lord, I'm all right. I understand. I done said, see, I done done my preaching. I done said all, if I don't say, if I don't preach another message after today, I done told y'all enough. You, you, I done said, I got 300 videos on YouTube. I done put it in almost every one of my videos. I said, if they take them all down, whatever, whatever, I done said my part. I done told you it's coming. Lord, let me get done. What did I say? Go to, uh, I don't even know if I can, I can't even go here. It's late in the hour. Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. Yeah, let's do that. Revelation 13. Let me get, let me get this one part. I just want to show y'all something. Now, 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 now the problem, that the, the, the understanding we don't, understand, we don't have is we don't realize that Paul and Peter and John, James, Jude, they all was talking about the Roman Catholic Church the whole time. They, they weren't talking about a beast to come. I mean, not, they weren't talking about a system to come. They were talking about it's over there. Amen. The papacy knew that the Protestants are starting to, these, these apostles are starting to wake people up about this is not God. This is actually, uh, this is actually a, a, a false God worship. So what they did to protect the church was they put out their own teachers and began to refute and teach. Actually, they, they actually start persecuting and start killing the uh, early apostles, thinking that if they silenced them, they would silence them from waking up people about their church. So in Revelation 13, he's ready to, to describe um, this system, this religious uh, system. Are y'all there? Let me get that myself. Revelation 13. Okay. It says, verse 1, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon, upon his, his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. The beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and, and his feet was the feet of a bear, and his mouth of a lion and drag and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The dragon, it's a dragon. So it's a dragon, it's a dragon. and it's the beast. it's the beast. Do y'all see that? And I saw one of his hands that it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who shall make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 42 months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. Listen to how what Satan's trying to do here. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. With the who? The beast is making war with the who? Saints. And to overcome them. Oh, wait, what? What? Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Now, I showed y'all in Daniel. I done showed y'all in Daniel. The same, the same beast we're talking about, he's, he's war with the saints. He was, given, he, was, he, 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 he was given the power to war with the saints and to overcome them. I thought we were going to be gone. Who's these saints getting overcame? And power was given over to, power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Are y'all there? And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Now, how in the world is you gonna be raptured when he's right here is telling you that those whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, they are the ones gonna worship him. Listen, listen to me. If everybody was going to be gone that was saved, then why do you need a mark for the people if everybody going to be worshiping him anyway? They're going to be God's people here in the midst of all of this, still holding on to Christ. That's why they're going to be a mark on God's people and they're going to be a mark on Satan's people. Are y'all there? Y'all not there? And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose name, okay, verse 9, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall, into cap, shall go into captivity. 
He that kill it with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is patience. And this is actually a twofold prophecy for those who led, who did the slavery and those who did the enslaving and the killing. It's coming back to them. I behold another beast coming out of the earth. Y'all there? He had two horns like a lamb. He spake as a dragon. He exercised all the power of the first beast. Come on now. We got, we, the, the Bible's telling you what's going on. And he exercised all the power of the first beast for him and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose daily wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so to make fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men, and deceive them that dwell on the earth, and deceive them that dwell on the earth, and deceive them, deceiving them, deceiving them. Right now, people are deceived right now. If the beast showed up to mob, most people would have accepted it. But deceiving them that dwell on the earth, uh, by the means of those miracles which he had done to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And here is wisdom. Let him that, that him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. I told y'all what the mark was before. I'm not really going to go into that. I want to show y'all something else. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood in the Mount Zion. Say amen. amen. No, you didn't get happy enough. And lo, I looked. I saw all this craziness, and I saw what the beast is doing. But lo, I looked, and there's a lamb that stood on Mount Zion. With him, 144,000 uh, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as a voice of many waters and, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed. What kind of song is that going to be? How beautiful that song is going to be. No man can learn the song except the 144. Look, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they were virgins. These are they which, that's not none of you. <laughs> I've heard this 44,000 prophecy so long, I'm like, no, listen to what the Bible said. I heard a Hebrew Israelite say it's them. No, the Bible, if you're a virgin, are you a virgin? It's talking about those who God has, has in the earth that is hollowed out for him. True priest. Not them Catholic priests that have sex with each other. The little boys. It's true priesthood. Are y'all there? Can I keep reading? Look at the anointing just on reading the book. There's power on reading it. Because it causes people to understand that what you, this world that you think is going to change. Something is coming, and it's coming quite fast. Look at this. Before the beasts and the elders, and no man could learn the song. Verse 4, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whatsoever he goeth. These are the redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no gal, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel flying to midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them, to dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue. Even while God is judging, the gospel is still going forth. People are still preaching. People are still getting saved, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him that made the heaven and earth and the sea and the mountains of water. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is falling. That's the beast system. Babylon is falling. That great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of her wrath, of her fornication. Are y'all there? And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without measure, without measure. Can you imagine? Without measure. Unto the, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels. That's the lake of fire we're talking about. And in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. 
who worship the beast and his image. Oh, ain't that a good word? And whoso receiveth the mark of his name. That's why you have to teach. That's why you got to teach people about this mark that's coming. You got to teach people that it, you, it's not going to always be the free the way it is right now. And you got to be ready to decide. Say decide. How are you going to decide if you can't live right now for him? I have one mission on this earth. Really, it is. I preach a lot of things, but one mission I have is to tell God's people that you must decide. A right, time is coming, and you're going to have to decide. I, uh, let me get done. And I heard a voice of heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. That means those who decided. I, 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 look, listen, I... I'd rather go ahead and give my life. So you bless after this point. That, that, that rest from their labors and their works do follow them. And I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one set like unto the son of man having, having his head on his head a grown crown and a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him. For the time has come for thee to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he sat and he sat, and he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped and another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven and he also having a sharp sickle and another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle saying thrust in the sharp sickle and gather the cluster of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe and the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of, of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city and blood came out of the winepress even unto the horses' bridles by the pace space of 6,600 furlongs. And another angel and another sign in heaven, a great and marvelous seven angels having the seven last plagues. I'm going to read this. I'm done. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. This is a complete judgment. Right. Utter judgment. Completely. You're living for a world that's going to look like this. This is what you're denying God for. A world that's actually going to be hell on earth. Because you do know them demons being released from hell is going to create the conditions. Who going to want to live in this? Who gonna want to live in this? Eternal life is gonna sound so good then. Think about what I'm saying. How good is eternal life gonna sound when you when what you got to look at is just total destruction and darkness? It's gonna be beautiful to her eternal life. And my job as a preacher, I found out is to prepare people to be ready. For the, for the one act of courage they're going to have to have. <laughs> you ain't got to be courageous, but one time. One act of courage. Because it's going to come down to one act. The Bible says everybody is going to be faced with one decision. You only got to be courageous once. Uh, Y'all want to talk about this. Come on, talk to me now. Talk to me. I didn't say God wouldn't keep some of us. The Bible says some, some of us is going to be kept. It says that. But the Bible also says some of us are going to fall. Are y'all there? Eternity, the key of, to eternity is one courageous act. Think about that. Then let me show you what I mean by that. I said this yesterday. I'll say it today. Y'all remember the Columbine massacre? Remember there was a young girl that was a Christian. And those two boys, which they happened to be Ashkenazi Jews, that's who they were. They never let, told y'all they hated Christ. That's why they did that, because those Ashkenazi Jews hate Christ. But they went to this one little girl, the first girl that they even came to, they went looking for her because she was this big, Christian in school. And they walked up on this, little, this girl as she was sitting under the tree, I think, outside before school, or during school, whatever, and came up to her with the gun and asked her a question. 
Do you believe now? Do you believe now? Are you a Christian? Now, in order for her to receive a great reward, she only needed one act of courage. As much as we talk about, I'm just going to be strong, see, one, one, one act. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is because I'm trying to get that on your mind to prepare you that there may come a day where you might have to do one act. And at least if you thought about it, you might have more courage at the time. But you sure ain't going to have no courage if you didn't know it was coming. <laughs> a witness says she looked up kind of confused. I think I would have been too. <laughs> because I'm from the streets, I, I think my talk game might have kicked in or something. I might start talking or something. I might listen here, man, you know. You know, talk for my life. I don't know. But but uh, she looked up confused like, huh? And then they said without even a second, she said, yeah. Bow. Looking in the eye, looking down the barrel of a gun. And she had to admit, yeah, I'm saved. And that's one act of courage. How many of y'all know you ain't got to be brave every day? <laughs> but one time you better be brave if it come down say if it come down to it because being a coward that one time could cost you eternal damnation so my job as a good pastor is to try to prepare you for that one act that the church is so not ready for and don't believe it's coming. But the one act of courage is all it takes. I love my children and I pray they hear what I say. That as much as you want to live your life, if it ever come down to it, don't deny, don't deny him. Don't deny Christ. Now y'all say, why are, you, why are you saying that? Because the Bible says this is what's going to happen. God's going to prove who's his. Are y'all there? Let me get done with this scripture. I'm going to be done. And I saw another sign in heaven, a great marvelous sign, seven angels of heaven, the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast. Ain't that good? Say amen. amen. Them that had gotten the victory. Amen. Is that going to be you? Yes. Amen. That's going to be me. Listen. Listen how this is worded. They got the victory over the beast, also over his image, yes. and over his mark. Yes. Did you see that? Yes. They, got the, they got three victories here. Yes. Over the beast, over his image, and over his mark. Yes. And, and over the number of his name. Yes. Stand on a sea of glass, having the harps of God. This is the cat's standard art. This, we did our thing. Yes. <laughs> I hope, I, I hope that's me. Lord, please let that be me. Let me be right there. Just do over this song. Playing in the glory. And they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways. Wait a minute. Just and true are thy ways, thou king of saints. Who shall not, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of testimony in heaven was opened, and the seven angels came out of the temple, having seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, having their breast, plate, breast girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven vows full of the wrath of God, who live forever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his, from his power. And no man was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the angels were fulfilled. I'm going to stop. I can keep going. But you, I, reading this is really good, but I can keep going. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Dang. Boy, so many things we can do here. But I'm done. I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done. Jump over 16, 16. Revelation 16. I just want to show y'all this and I'm going to be done. Amen. Are y'all there? Amen. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. 
And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne. Let me tell y'all why when you read Revelation, what happens. I'm going to show y'all how, 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 how alive and anointed this book is by itself. When you start reading Revelations, you start seeing. You literally start seeing stuff. You see, you see this. You start seeing it. It's like you start getting mental images and pictures of this happening. That's why he said you blessed to read the book. You blessed us to read it and to hear it read. Look at this. And he says, and, and, and the seven of the, where was, where I stop at? Are y'all there? Verse 18. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. There was a great earthquake such as not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And the city was divided in three parts and the city of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of why would you want to live here? Why? And every island fled away. Look, look what's happening. The word, the word that you think going to be here. Every island gone. Maybe it went underwater. Maybe something happened. An earthquake made her. I'm serious. If it, where did it go to? And the mountains were not found. What mountains? Where, where, what happened? That's devastation. And there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven. Every stone about a weight of a talent, and men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hell, for the plague was very grievous. Now listen to what they did. All this is going on. What do they do? Come on, what do they do? There's a wickedness in the heart of men that you have no idea how wicked this world's going to be. That in the face of total destruction, the, mount the mountains are gone. The islands are gone. And they're still talking about. Do you know why they're shaking their fists? They have received the mark. And there's no redemption. That's why they so. That's why they. I didn't understand that. Until I thought about it. I said, you know why they're so angry? Because they received the mark. They feel just the way Lucifer feels. The same way the fallen angels felt when they went to Enoch and Enoch told and God told Enoch, there's no remedy for them. There's no redemption for them. And they got bitter and angry. That's how men are going to feel because they're going to realize even if we wanted to get right. By accepting the mark, we have altered who we are. We no longer are eligible for salvation. And to see that not only am I going to suffer as long as I'm living, but what do I got coming? So that's why they're like this. Because they would believe the deception that God is love and he love everybody and nobody's going to ever be judged. And he's going to give everybody's going to heaven no matter what you believe. And they believed all that new age teaching and they didn't realize that as they were doing what they wanted to do, they were faced with a choice that they didn't make the correct one. And as God begins to pour out his wrath, it'll come clear. I made the wrong choice. I remember, I, remember, I remember reading the book of Enoch, and I told y'all I believe that that's what Satan's problem was. He always was mad that God would not redeem him. So he always tries to destroy man, to get man to sin so he can accuse man. Because if you, if, if, that's why he's so upset at you, because how can you forgive them but not forgive me? So that's why he's, all, but see, but, but, but if you remember in the book of Enoch, God told them fallen angels that I put you over men. You were supposed to guide men, but you went and corrupted man. So there's no salvation for you. So that's why they go off to war with God's creation, because they want you to feel how they feel. Think about the souls in hell. I'm going to show y'all this. Think about how the souls, why you think they so happy and rejoicing when you go to hell. Because now you feel the hopelessness that they feel. They're making God's creation feel how they feel. To know that for eternity, this is me. So their goal is to set out to destroy it. They, now, you know, Satan knows that he's not going to defeat God. He knows his, he knows his lake of fire. He know God's word is, he know God's word is real more than we do. He know if God spoke it, he'd be gone tomorrow. But he's going, he's getting mad to think that you can somehow come up with a way to defeat what's coming. So they'll get on his team because his whole goal is knowing I'm going, but y'all going too. 
He already know he's going, but he's saying, but if I go, I'm, I'm trying, because I'm still trying to hurt God. He's still trying to hurt God. He knows what hurt Jesus is seeing his creation go where they wasn't supposed to go. That's why Jesus said, hell was not created for man. So every time Satan gets one in hell, it's just one more. He's trying to hurt God with that. So that's why he's trying to take so many, even though he knows that his end is hell. It's the lake of fire. And we'll be standing there on the shores of glory, rejoicing as the tormentor that has tormented us will receive his final reward. I pray that you or I are not next to him. Because we did not take advantage of this great salvation. Stand on your feet. So I hate the fact that they're doing what they're doing and passing all these funny laws. But I understand it's a part of it. Think about this. Think about the souls of people who said, God created me this way. And Satan got them leaving a lie. And they die and go to hell. You don't, you don't see the evil... See, you think the homosexual, the evil homosexuality is a sex. It's a bit, two men to be, you think that's what's evil about it. The, the, the evil, that's not the evil part to me. It's nasty, but that ain't the evil part. The evil part is they believe. They, they're, before it's all over, they are going to teach you that it is okay with God. And they are going to believe that they are right with God. And to believe that lie, it causes them their soul. So, so to see your child go into that and never say nothing, you are damning their soul by not saying nothing. Because God has to judge it. Do you know why God, do you know why that sin is, that type of sin is so difficult? Because that's the only sin that I've ever seen people commit that they said is not wrong. They keep trying to make that sin right. And these preachers are twisting the word. They're going to come up with a way to make this Right. It's, it's, now that they pass that law, you're going you're gonna to see how they're going to, it's going to be doctrine coming out that how somehow this is going to be right. And people in that lifestyle are damned. Are damned. And so, how is it not love to tell them? You mean, I'm hurting your feelings? Because I'm trying to tell you that there is a price for this life. How is it not love? So do you know who they're going to curse with the greatest curse that they could ever curse? It's the ones that lied. The one that said, DN, science said you was born this way. The cousin that turned them out. The mama that let her walk around in her shoes and it was okay with him being sensitive and soft and that's they're going to hate you if you wake up in hell. So the decision that came down, it upset me until I understood that the greatest, the, I started understanding, because I, I only thought about, well, how does this affect me? I'm a preacher. This doesn't affect me. But after a while, as I was riding to Chicago, the Lord said, do you know what's, it's, how it's going to affect them? So as I was watching, y'all know, because I told y'all the TV, my, this, I felt like my TV just turned gay that day. It, like the TV was gay. I don't know what was, I couldn't get a, I couldn't get a straight channel. <laughs> I've never seen that much gay. It's just like, I, I said, the, the TV is gay. The remote's gay. I can't get no straight channel here. But, without, but, but as I began to look, because I was angry, because they celebrate. Didn't they not celebrate? Oh, celebration. This, this for raiding and. Oh, they put it in our face and just rubbed our face all in it. And I was upset about that because I'm a preacher and I'm understanding the ramifications. I know I've already said things that could literally get me in trouble. So I'm, I'm thinking about that. But as I began to think, I started looking at them and realizing the damnation of this generation. All these souls are going to be swept into hell because somebody will not tell them that this is a sin, or they will not, really, they will not listen. 
So my mindset changed. I'm no longer mad. I'm really kind of sad right. that these people are uh, now have down. If they don't wake up, they have damned themselves. So our jobs as Christians are really, really greater than we think. We run the risk of offending folk because we have a truth message. But you got you you got nieces and nephews that are that they. I showed my wife yesterday. I showed her when we was going to Chicago. I, I showed her a book that they are putting in your child's elementary school. And this book was about normalizing pedophilia to children. There was a book where it was, a, it was like, it was like, a, like you know, you ever seen like the Caillou books, the little story book? The little boy was telling, talking about, well, my uncle, sometimes he stayed with us. And, you know, he, 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 you know, he touched me right here and he told me it was okay. Then the next page was he's laying in the bed with his uncle. And he said, my uncle said it's okay for, for him to touch me here, and it's our secret. Getting kids ready for this. It's a book. Do y'all not hear? It's a book. It's in a book. They're going to teach it to your child. That's why me and my wife saw the statistic. Did you know black homeschool is the fastest growing thing now? Black folk. It's the fastest growing thing. People realize that you, they realize what the public school system really is. It's for indoctrination. It's to indoctrinate your children against this, make them atheists, is what it's designed to do. But I showed her that book, and I couldn't believe that they put it so bold, normalizing. Think, how's your job? You got a little boy. Think about, pedo, think about giving the child a book with pedophilia. He's off by himself reading it. No, you know how I chill. Now he's over just reading it. You know how you read something when you was real little, and all of a sudden that stuck with you. Think about a child reading and normal, normalizing pedophilia. What kind of world is it going to be? What kind of world is it going to be? That's why they got, that's why they got to give these, that's why, why do you think pedophiles are, and, and homosexuals are all want special rights? Because they know people are going to kill them. They want special rights. They want, because they, they, they want real hard penalties because they know the reaction is going to be devastating. They know that they're going to get killed. Ain't going to be nothing. Ain't, ain't, I don't know what else I could do. I mean, I could pray. But I just don't know what other penalty he need. We're going to have to go Old Testament on them. <laughs> but could you imagine normalize, that normalize? This is what's coming. Because when they have eroded the foundation, messed with those ancient boundaries that God set, now everything's coming through these gates. And you're going to see everything come now. I'm, I, I'm tired of telling homosexuals we love them. I ain't saying that no more. Our love is what they played on. We've been trying to love. We, what have we always keep saying? We love the sin or not the sin. We keep, I ain't saying that no more. I love what God love. God going to judge you. They played on that. Y'all, they played us with that. I kept saying tolerance is going to be the death of us. Tolerance is going to be the death of us. And now through tolerance, this thing is in, it's, it's, it's a law. Now you don't know the ramifications. If you got a business and they come in your business and you have a business where you say, like there was a, a woman who made wedding cakes and she had Christian belief. I don't want to make no cake for, for, for this homosexual couple. They sued her and won. A woman, at a, a woman at a wedding chapel said, I don't want to marry y'all, my religious beliefs. They sued her and won. This is the stuff you're going to have to deal with. They could come into church right now and come up here and say, we want you to marry us. And if I said no, they can't do us like that because we got bylaws. See, every church has to now, from yesterday, change their laws in their church. Because there's no other way. That, cause the whole goal was to, try, was to march against the church. Now watch what I'm saying. Churches are going to fall like dominoes. Now what I mean by fold is they won't go out of business. They're going to adopt it. They're going to adopt it. They're going to just say, okay, come on in. 
God love her. And see, this is what this got. See, this is what is this punk Christian stuff I don't like. All of a sudden, now God, God y'all couldn't do, don't be just. God love everybody. And love is the love and the love is the love. And while you saying love, they taking away your rights. They putting pastors in prison while they saying love. We have to realize this is a war. Say amen. But it's not a war against them. It's the war for the minds of your children who don't know that this is a perversion. So your job is to teach it to them. Amen. Ain't that good? Come on, let's pray. Come on, son. Let's pray. Amen. Church should be informative. It should make you think. I don't understand what's going on in the church now. It's just no, it's no relevancy. It should make me think. It should, it should put me up on the game going on around me. What's going on in my world? Man, I got sons, man. Don't you understand? This bothers me. I got sons, and I'm sitting there like, Lord, we ain't even have to deal with it. This is not, I mean, we had, I mean, we knew some fruity cats, but they didn't, you know, it was, it was in the closet. Nobody, nobody was assaulting nobody. Nobody was pushing this in nobody's face. But now we got to deal with this, and we got to see the bathrooms are changing, and your daughter could be in the bathroom, and a man could go in the bathroom with a woman. It's going to be weird. There's going to be no boundaries. What are we going to do? Well, I've already decided I'm going to stand for Christ. Amen. And I just feel like pastors ought to just say, okay, um, I've taught y'all enough. They're they going to take the church, so I've taught y'all, so y'all know how to live for God. It's over. Go pray. <laughs> Don't you be talking about, Pastor, what you going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move out the way, man. Hey. Vengeance is not mine. God going to fight this. Now, you mark what I said. Judgment is coming so swift on this. Oh, boy. It's coming. Mark what I said. The judgment on this is going to come so swift that even those who don't know God are going to say, that got to be God right there. That had to be judgment for that. It's coming right swift. So I'm going to tell y'all what I'm, I'm just, I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to close it. But I got to put it out there to you because I wouldn't be a good pastor if I didn't tell you. This year is going to be a real year of turmoil. I'm tell, everybody's prophesied it. I've seen it myself. I know it's coming. They, this is going to be a real year of turmoil, especially economically. Nothing's going to be worth anything. Your 401ks, your pensions, your gold, nothing, nothing. What's going to be worth stuff is what really is value. What really is value is what you can eat. <laughs> That's going to be the most important thing. So if you, now I'm just throwing it out there. If you have savings, no need in hoarding it up because the Bible says what happens when you hoard up that money? Somebody else come in and steal it. You lose it. You need to be thinking about how to supply your family for a little while. Y'all heard now, y'all. I ain't talking about no cult crazies and stuff. <laughs> but what would you do if tomorrow all the stores were closed and there was no way to buy no food? What would you do? Because you ain't got no food and you never have food in there. Most people ain't got no food. They only got two days worth of food in Kroger's. After that, it's over. So I, I did a seminar. I might even put it online. I didn't put it online. Some of y'all were here. I did a seminar on emergency preparedness. I didn't even know how vital that seminar is now. And I taught survive. I taught how to survive when this thing hit. And I'm not saying this. Every economist is saying the same thing. This ain't even just spiritual world. This is the natural world of saying an uh, economic. No, no, not a crisis. Catastrophe total meltdown of this economy. I've heard it over and over again. They say it's coming this year. Now, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to tell you, prepare your family. Because you may have to prepare for, I, I, I say you at least ought to have a month worth of something. So you need to think about that. Because your money ain't gonna, money ain't gonna mean, mean nothing. You can, have a, you can have all the money in the world. What, what is money? The Bible says that they're gonna say a, 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 a day's wages for a loaf of bread. What is it? That's hyperinflation. That means, that means over in Germany when that happened to them, they had wheelbarrows of cash for bread, for a piece of bread. 
because money won't mean nothing. We, me and my wife, we, we've been in countries that's like it now. When we was in um, Uganda, it take this much money. This much stack. That's about $100. This much, I mean, it's stack. It took, <laughs> I cast in some of my money. I thought I was rich. So he told me, oh, that ain't nothing. I said, I got 50000 Y'all check, what is it, shillings? Shillings. He said, oh, I ain't nothing. I said, I said, what I thought? It's why, why is it? big bills, but it don't mean nothing because their inflation. Yeah. Why? Why is that? Because they printed money. They keep, and that's what we are doing. We're printing money. We are done. We, we can't print no more money. It's over. Nobody else wants any more of our money. China is dumping our money. Russia is dumping our money. So once that, once the world find out the dollar ain't worth nothing, it's over. So what you have now is going to be very important. So you ought to have something for your family. You ought to be able to survive. You ought to have some months of survival. I'm not just saying, I'm not listening, y'all. I'm not trying to scare you. No, I'm just telling you. The, you know who's going to be king during that time? The man with canned goods. <laughs> He's going to be the king. The man with rice. What is a thousand dollars in your pocket, and you and I and I got a bowl of rice, and you starving to death? You gonna be like Esau? You gonna sell your birthright for that little bowl of rice? Prepare. Listen, I'm not trying to scare nobody. I'm trying to tell you, this is just even common sense wisdom. Have you a, a, some months worth of supplies for your family? Dry goods, water, all of that. Have it put up. Now, and, and every now and then, if, if don't nothing happen, change it out. Yes. Eat that up and replenish it. <laughs> but keep that stuff. Have, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm put that online. I'm going to put that, you know, because I, I taught all the way down to, to the tools you needed. I, I went all the way. I went deep with that. All the way down to the tools, to the weapons you might have to have. Yeah, weapons, because Jesus told them. See, you know, it's, it's one lady online. She tried to convict me. What, you said you got gun. What, that don't, you he said, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. But they didn't even keep reading the book. When, it, when after that, he went on and said, look, he told Peter and them, go get, go, go, look, man, go get some swords. Don't get one. Don't get one. He said, now what we got going, it's a little different. Get, make sure you got more than one. Why would he say get swords for if they ain't going to use them? See, that's that religious foolishness. You need something to, I, I said, I want something to shoot a, to shoot a, to shoot a bird with. <laughs> it might become a meal. I'm going to shoot that bird. I ain't sparing nobody, no animals. I love my dogs. <laughs> Let it come down to me or them. Man, man, if it come down to me, I, look, I don't care. Y'all don't understand. I love them dogs, but if it come down to me and them, it is, it is an animal. I'm a Chinese it. <laughs> I'm going to Chinese that dog. <laughs> That's what you're eating anyway. You've been eating it all. You don't even know you've been eating sad. You've been eating rats and dogs. You know that red sauce and stuff turning that meat red. They, they turn it red so you don't know what. And you still can't figure out what pork is this. What kind of pork is this red? Man, that's all kind of mystery. They done came out. Me and my wife, I showed up a picture where they busted a Chinese restaurant. They had babies in the freezer. In the freezer. Babies. Oh, it's getting, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. You're going to see what paganism really is. So prepare, say prepare. prepare. Hey, Amen. I'm not trying to, I ain't trying to scare you, but, 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 you know, we should have some type of preparation in our home. Amen. Can you defend your home? Amen. Can you defend your house if you have to? Because you got to realize if everything go crazy and ain't nothing left, people are coming after you. Yeah. What you got, they're going to rob you. Can you defend your home? And God requires us to defend our home. You can do now. Y'all got to get out of that old religious stuff. God, I don't want about break and rape your wife. You think God? You think God gonna say go ahead and let them rape your wife? No, defend your family. So, so, and most of us have never been taught that. So, I, so I, I taught that class. It was almost a year ago, and I'm gonna put that teaching out. And you need to be thinking like that. You know, think about that. At least think about can I survive? For a month, do I have enough to survive for one month? Because it's gonna—you don't know what I told—I I tell people have enough to survive if you have to walk somewhere. Yeah. 
you might have to walk to your people in another city. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I think that way. Because I, I read the book. I know what's coming. And I know, I know the reason why we're going to be in trouble is because we, won't, we, won't we don't want to see it. We want to think this is going to always go on. This country, going all, everything will always be good. You're going to turn on the water. It's going to always work. The electricity will always come on. You always have the internet. There's something going on with your phones right now. Your networks are going down. You're trying to figure out why come I can't come. I mean, it's been happening for the last few days. Ever since they passed that law, the phone's been going crazy. And I said, they, you know what they doing? They testing you. They doing because they know. Because I thought about it. When they cut that phone off, I was stuck. I said, I said, I don't even know if, if I know where a pay phone is. Right. Think about that. And no, you wouldn't. Even, and nobody even has a phone that's not a cellular phone. If they cut off our phones, we would be lost. You would get no information if they cut off your Twitter and your all that's gone. You you be you would know what's going on. It could be a, a bomb coming. You never would know it. So they know they got us hooked on technology, and they got the switch where they click. So we have to think about. We got to think his way. Amen. Did I give you understanding? I ain't, I ain't gonna get you no off the call. I want you to be scared enough. Be scared enough. Yes, the but this is a scary time. Why would you not be? This will make you think, make you live for God. I'm not trying to scare you, but it's a scary time. You have to be prepared for this time. Say amen. Amen. Play song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands up to the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, you told us these things would come. You told us, let our hearts not be troubled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The security of prophecy. Because we know ahead of time, it gives us a sense of peace. Because if this is not catching you off guard, then I know you must have a plan for me. The security of prophecy that you told us ahead of time so we would be ready. Father, we hope you, we hope we have many, many days. We hope the mercies of God are still upon this nation, upon our land. We hope you give us more time. But if you don't, we hope you prepare us. Prepare us to see you, which is the most important thing. Eternal life is the most important thing. Hallelujah. Father, as a father, I ask you to, I, 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 I plead with you. Make my children ready. Lord, don't let them fall in love with this world that's passing away. Lord, make them ready. I hope that if I'm standing in heaven, I don't know how I will be able to. I guess you would give me the power to rejoice, but oh, if my children don't make it. I'm sure you'll give me a supernatural grace that I could deal with it, but Lord, let them make it. Let them not love this world, God. Don't let them do what we did, what we had to go out and experience sin. Let them believe that you're real and to serve you. Don't let them get caught up that they got to go get a life or have a life. Let them know the best life is just serving you. Whatever you have for them, let them want it. Lord, everybody in this ministry, Lord God, let them make it in the kingdom. Let them make it in, Lord God. Let them make it, Lord God. Let them make it. Let the families make it, Lord. Let, her, let us make it in the kingdom. That's why we're serving you. That's why we, we're not coming out to church because of no show. We are beyond show. We are saying, Lord, feed our soul to give us strength and courage and power to make it, to hold on to you every week by week, to hold on to you. To not let go of you even though the world is getting colder and darker and more evil and people are falling on the right hand and falling on the left hand god give us the power to stand keep us keep us from this wicked hour great god that you are hallelujah hallelujah If 
if you're here this morning you say pastor steve i don't know if i'm saved or right with god i don't know you might not even understand what that means but if you say i want to be sure i want to be sure that i'm right with god i want to make sure i'm ready if, if it ever come down to it i want to be right with god if you can say that if you say man i don't want to leave without making sure I don't care, you might have been in the church a long time. You might have been in church all your life. But you want to be sure. I want you to come. This is the hour to come. Come now. Come now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come now. If you died today, this will be the most important moment of your life. This moment would have been the most important moment of your life. The time that you had an opportunity to receive eternal life. What would you give if you died today and missed this? What would you give to come back and get this moment again? What would you give? Get it while it's free. Get it while it's free. There's going to come a time this is going to be illegal. It'll be illegal to come in the house of God. It'll be illegal to join ourselves together in the name of Jesus. Get it while it's free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up to the Lord. The Bible says, with the heart man believes, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says, all those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe that with all my heart his words got to be right because I have nothing else to depend on I have nothing else I have nothing else that I'm believing I don't have no other belief no other religion no other books it's only his word and we're gonna put his word into action and receive the greatest thing we could have ever receive which is his eternal life after the day the Lord's gonna write your name in his book hallelujah everybody at the altar say father in Jesus name I come before you right now I know there are things in my life that are not right I call it sin I repent turn change my mind about my sin I ask you, take it away. Wash me in your blood. Wash me in your blood. Make my garment clean and white. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you died and rose the third day to take away my sin. I believe that the penalty for my sin was placed upon you and for that I receive your redemption and your salvation I believe that you're coming back for me you're coming back for me I'll be with you I'll be with you amen 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 come on give the Lord some praise hallelujah Keep your hands lifted. Father, fill your people with your spirit till they run over. Without measure, fill us till we run over, Lord God. Fill us till the peace of God floods that surpasses all understanding. Till the pettiness of life rolls away and we get sincere and serious about you. Let the soberness of the word of God come upon us, Lord God. Stir up our callings. Let us open our mouth to give the word to those that need it, Lord God. Let us become evangelists in our families and get them saved and do all we can to bring them to the foot of the cross. For time is short and night is coming when no man can work. So come on, Olivia, and say, use me. Come on, say, use me. Hallelujah. God's going to put that anointing on. He's going to use you to reach those that would never listen to God. They would never listen to the word. But God's going to give you a special influence used to use you. But you got to open your mouth at the time. You might be at the, at the picnic on the 4th of July. You might be somewhere where it's not convenient. But at the time you sense the unction of God, 
you let him use you. Open your mouth and just talk to him about Jesus. You ain't got to give him a sermon. Just talk to him about eternal life. Do you have eternal life? That's the greatest question you could ask anybody. Do you have eternal life? And I can begin to talk to you about how to get it today, free of charge. And you ain't got to go to church to get it. I can help, because I got it, I can help you get it. I can, I can turn you on to my hookup right now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Thou art welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Thou art welcome.